Again, I, I welcome you. Um, my name is Matt Hodge, and I am the Deputy Principal here at the College. Um, and I thank you very much for joining me this evening for um, this information that will go a long way to assisting you with the journey ahead for your Year 12 um, child this year um, as they navigate their final year of schooling. And it has been a wonderful start to the year for our Year 12 students. They've um, got into their learning. They've um, been on Year 12 retreat. Some students have been on geography field trip. They're busy parent, preparing for Love Thy Neighbour Day. We've got students uh, who are out doing their biology field trip. It has been a very, very busy start to the year for our Year 12 students. And we really look forward to the many, many achievements that they, that they will accomplish this year um, as in Year 12. Before we go any further, we'll just um, take a moment to pause and to acknowledge country and to um, pray before we begin. I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land we're gathering on today. As Indigenous and non-Indigenous people together, let us have a sense of importance of the country upon which we are meeting, where learning and ceremony have taken place over many thousands of years. Let us sense the land beneath our feet and acknowledge to whom it belongs and pay our respects to their elders and all elders, past, present and future. For we too are one in land, one in spirit, one in faith, united in God's love. And we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and then the Holy Spirit. Lord, bless our school, Chanel College. Bless all our students, staff, parents, and others in the Chanel community. Help us to work together as a Christian school to gain the knowledge, faith, and courage to live justly in the world. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So our focus tonight is to talk about, um, in particular, um, the QCE and what that looks like and entails in the weeks ahead. For our students, um, they have commenced and had that transition over to their Year 12 studies at the end of last year, and most students completed the majority of their first assessment tasks. So tonight is really just a reminder of those expectations and some of the, the key processes that are involved um, that, that need to be considered in the weeks ahead. For our students, our expectation is high, be it in their learning, be it in their um, personal conduct at the school. It's about being consistent in, in their behaviour, in their learning, and how they apply themselves to their studies. A senior student should be cooperative. They should continue to aim to achieve their personal best and to show respect. And as at our opening mass, when they got their badges, um, follow that charge that they have to be those senior leaders at the college, where they set that example for all students who look up to them. Now, we have many, many, we have 180 year sevens this year, and they are all looking up to our very tall, in their eyes, year 12 students, as, as they, these young um, new students, new sh shenanigans, really approach their learning. So we really set the bar high for our year 12 students. They're only weeks away from being into the real into the real world and and, and facing um, their next step. So this year is an important year to make sure that they're um, sailing in the right direction towards their goals. Importantly, um, shenanigans are respectful, responsible, and resilient learners. And I know last year in the Year 11 information evening, I talked about the important um, qualities of being respectful and responsible and resilient for all of our students and achieving their very best in their senior years. It's students being respectful to themselves in, in terms of embracing their learning to achieving their best. It's being responsible by meeting their deadlines, by um, communicating, working with their peers, working with their teachers and being resilient. And as you know, um, year 11 and 12 has many ups and downs. It has very many, um, and hurdles that students need to get through. And be it that balance between doing school versus um, working and family commitments or sporting commitments um, to 
just persisting through because it is now their last year of 13 years of education. And we, if you've done something for a long time, you know that it takes a lot of effort um, as we reach the end and get close to our goals. So we're very proud of our Year 12 students and their efforts and how they've started the year, as I've said, and we look forward to their achievements um, in, in the weeks and months ahead. So I just wanted to go through this evening some reminders about curriculum expectations. Um, we, I spent some time with our Year 12s uh, to talk about the importance of their pathways and the journey that they'll have in terms of their learning um, as we move forward. You're going to hear a lot of acronyms tonight and also in, in the weeks ahead with your, student, with your, with your children as they um, keep going through and working through year 12. Queensland uh, Curriculum and Assessment Authority, QCAA, they focus on the Queensland Certificate of Education, another acron acronym, um, the QCE, and they guide that. They focus on subjects and they focus on the external assessment and all those bits in between. Where we have QTAC, the Queensland Tertiary Admission Centre, they focus on the ATAR and the university entrance. So if your child is looking at going to university next year or all the year after if they're going to defer, QTAC handles that. And how that works is QTAC receives that information from QCAA, they calculate the ATAR and they handle that tertiary entrance. So they're the two main bodies that, um, that guide students in their learning um, this year in terms of the Queensland Certificate of Education. So just a reminder for our students, the Queensland Certificate of Education has four key components that students need to meet. The first one is the set amount. They need to achieve 20 credits across the two years. For the majority of our students, they achieved 12 credits by the end of term three last year. They also need to meet a set pattern, which is 12 plus eight. 12 of those credits must be from what we call completed core. They are studies that students start and, then, and that they finish. And so for most of our students, that's their English, math and their religion, that they start at beginning of year 11 and they'll conclude at the end of this year. For other students, that it might involve completing some VET as well. Also, students need to met, uh, meet the set standard, and which is a C or better in their studies. I've shown students where they can look up on the QCAA website to work out what is the pass mark to be able to get that C. In some subjects, that might be a 42 out of 100. In other subjects, in all the sciences, they need to achieve 49 out of 100 to be able to hit that C standard. So that information is readily available on the QCAA website. And I've asked teachers, and they have been doing it, going through with the students about um, what they need to achieve. I know from an English perspective, they, um, teachers have been talking about um, getting a, a 16 in every assessment piece to be able to achieve well and, and maximise their results. Finally, the final component is the literacy and numeracy requirement. All of our students um, have met that when they've passed a unit of English and a unit of maths. Um, so that's, that's a great um, box to have ticked off. So students are a complete general subjects and they complete applied subjects. General subjects are aligned to tertiary study and applied subjects are aligned to employment. For our students this year in, in their unit three and four, the majority of subjects um, have students complete 75% of their, of their result in internal. So that's assessment that teachers have written and has been endorsed by the Queensland Certificate of uh, QCAA. Then students then complete the final component of their um, studies and those last marks in the external exam. With math and science, that is 50 marks internal and 50 marks external. And so the assessment moving forward, the next assessment, the assessment coming up at the end of this term and the assessment uh, in term two is vital for students to be able to achieve their best and to be able to achieve that pass mark early and that helps with the mindset as they approach their external exams. We talk to students about if they have passed their subject in advance, they really can just focus on achieving their best in the external exams where they don't have that added pressure of thinking, oh, I need to get a certain mark to be able to just pass this subject. And so the internal assessment is key. And for our students have already commenced that their learning 
and many have already received those assessment tasks. So it's a, it's a key period for us, for our year 12 students. The external assessment occurs for general subjects. Um, so that's the maths, the science subjects, the humanities, subjects like essential English, essential math, furnishing skills, religion and ethics, they, they do not have external assessment. But in the external assessment, as I just said, for maths and science, those results are worth 50. Um, so there is that um, key focus in, in preparing for those subjects. And those uh, math and science subjects also assess the curriculum and the knowledge across the whole learning. And so students need to be practicing and they go and say, oh, I've got no homework. If they do a math and science, they always have homework because they may be assessed on work that they studied at the beginning of term four last year, and they're needing to remember that for over 12 months. So there's always work to be done and preparation for those assessments. The external assessment um, calendar will be um, released in due course. It's a, when you think about the number of year 12 students in the state, it's a, it's a big um, task by QCAA. The external assessments are held at the end of the year uh, and they go for those periods. Students need to be available for their exams as they're compulsory. And beyond that, they can be at home studying, um, getting preparation, uh, preparing for their exams. For applied subjects, students doing essential math and essential English, they'll complete what we call a CIA, a common internal assessment at the end of this term. That, um, that assessment piece is written by QCAA. And it goes for 60 minutes or 90 minutes, depending which subject. And, and they'll sit that in our normal exam block. That assessment piece is marked by our teachers, um, but it just gives that uh, a common task across the state for students in those subjects. Um, um, I know in English, they receive stimulus in advance. So um, if you have students um, studying essential English, keep an eye out for that assessment in advance. Um, that will be coming up before that exam. So that leads us to the end of Unit 3. And the end of Unit 3 um, will be reached uh, in about week 5 and 6 during Term 2. It's the last report card that students will receive while they're at school. At the end of Year 12, they get an exit statement and they get their QCE or QCIA if they've obtained it from QCAA. So this is the last um, report card that they get. And, and yes, we, we receive really positive feedback from our um, year 12 parents last year and we've endeavoured to move our reporting period earlier so that those students who need to use this report card for their apprenticeship or traineeship applications will have it in time to be able to submit that. So we've, we've did some rearranging to make sure that happens. On, those, um, on that report card, um, subjects for general subjects are provisional. Um, they still need to go through a process for QCAA. And so there is some variance that can occur. Not that doesn't generally happen in a lot of subjects, but it's just that um, understanding that needs to be held that they're provisional marks on that report card. The learning behaviours in the teacher con comments are, are current and do not change. Um, and if there is a change in that, um, in the result, we generally don't report uh, or re reproduce the report card because we've moved on. It's a point in time report card. An important part of, uh, or important tool for our students is the MyQCE website. And students have engaged with this website um, and will be in the weeks ahead as they complete their academic integrity module um, that they need to complete for QCAA. This website has a, uh, a mountain of information for students. It has an online portal where students can log in, they can see their results as after they've been confirmed, so move from provisional to confirmed. They can also um, see key information about what to bring for exams, um, when the external assessment's on. There's lots of information there. And I really encourage you to um, encourage your, um, your child to be able to engage with that website. Now, the key thing is, is that um, once students graduate at the end of year 12 with us, um, they're classified as adults, as they are, and um, help we are then una unable to um, advocate for students with QCAA, they have to do that themselves. So it's really important that um, each student can log on to the MyQCE portal, that they have saved the email address and the password that they've used, um, because at the end of the year, when they wanna see the results, this is where those results are sent. 
and that's where they're accessed. So that website is a key tool um, for students this year. So once students finish at the end of their QCE, those students who uh, meet the requirements also gain an ATAR. And ATAR, the Australian Tertiary Admission Rank, is the mechanism that's used for students to enter um, university. Um, it indicates their position relative to other students in, uh, in the state. So it's on a 2,000 point scale and it starts at 99.95 and then it goes down in increments of 0 0.05. Um, and then students are banded in, in groups of 30. So the top 30 students get a 99.95, the next 30 get a 99.0. Uh, and then once they get to the bottom, they, they sort of stop calculating ATARs once they reach 30 and zero. So when students go and log on um, to the QTAC website, they can start to see already um, what sort of ATAR might be useful uh, or beneficial to be able to get into their desired course. Now QTAC calculates those ATAR and our message is, is very simple. If students achieve the best that they can in their QCE, that will translate to a high ATAR, or the ATAR that students want. So for our, for our year 12, it's not about focusing on the ATAR as they work on their assessment now. It's about focusing on getting the best that they can, and that will translate. Um, I know looking at last year's cohort, most students got their first preference. And by taking that mindset of doing the best you can and um, pushing as hard as you can in, in your, in your um, application and effort translates to a high ATAR. Um, so the ATAR is calculated using five general subjects or four gen what we call four general subjects plus something else. So, um, so plus one, it could be an applied subject, it could be a cert three or higher um, that, that they use to calculate. Now students, if they don't get their QCE, which we all we want them all to, um, and if they meet this criteria and pass, they can still get an ATAR. Um, even if they might not get their Q, um, QCE because they're won by two separate organisations. Um, students who have a certificate three or higher also can gain a, a what they call a, a VET ranking, uh, and that can also um, convert into university entrance. So there's a little bit of the information there about the QCE and about um, the ATAR. Now we move into that situation that, um, and after having many years of, or a few years now of COVID, that sometimes uh, there is the need to make an adjustment to assessment because of illness or misadventure. And so I just wanted to quickly just sort of go through those processes so that you're aware. Now, all the information is available on Parent Lounge already for uh, our applications, and it is also available on Student Cafe. I'll be sending out further correspondence um, at the moment, or in the, week, in the days ahead, that will also just give you greater clarity. We've got a nice one page document that you can just keep at home um, when something might occur. And so, really, the process is um, that students, if they meet the criteria, that they can apply. The majority of our applications are because of illness. And if, the stu if a student is unwell during an assessment period, there must be a medical certificate. And that medical certificate must include the reason why and that there has been an impact. So the, uh, a general work, um, a certificate, sorry, doctor certificate, um, would that say that, this, yeah, that uh, Matt Holt is, un is unsuitable for work? That doesn't meet the, um, the level of evidence that's required. So it needs to say more. And if you're in doubt, feel free that we can, we can do it um, on the day. So if you're a bit unsure and you're going, you know, your, your child is unwell and you're going to the doctor, um, that you can um, you can give the school a ring, uh, myself or, or Ms. Ms. Hayden, we can um, sort of cl clear you up to make sure you get the right thing on the paper. Uh, one of the things that also that we recommend is there's a there's a few. It is very hard. We understand how hard it is sometimes to get into um, to get into a doctor on the day. Um, so we would encourage you to um, there's apps where you can use online doctors who can produce medical certificates that meet the criteria, um, instant con consult, I think is the name of them. So I encourage you to have a look at that just in case. Um, so once that happens, if it's, if it's a, you feel free, you can make a meeting with me. If it's a, if it's a simple uh, medical certificate, we can, um, we can look at that. We can do that over the phone, saving a meeting, um, but that level of evidence and the documentation is key. 
students need to complete the ARA application form that's on the website. It's, it's, there's a lot of information there on it. We um, have to have the evidence. It gets lodged in an online platform for QCAA and we need to have that evidence there. So it, it's more than just saying, okay, you're sick. Um, um, you know, you don't have to do what that's fine. That, you know, you, you, we'll sort something out. We need to follow the, the, the processes through that. Of, often, a catch-up assessment will not happen straight away um, because teachers generally, it might happen like a week later because we have teachers have to write a different exam paper and that takes some time to do. Um, so um, we just need to make sure and please be aware that, that, that it can take a little bit of time. Some applications um, do not get approved. Um, so you cannot um, apply for an ARA if it's for um, uh, holidays or, or um, weddings or things like that. Um, if it's assignment, in most cases, sometimes um, if there's going to be an absence, students can submit on or before the due date. And so that means that um, if, if they're going away, that's fine. Um, they just need to be planned and get it in in advance. Um, students who might go away for sport, um, there's a different process for that, and that is on parent lounge and student cafe, and that's a school approved absence. And that's when the students are represent, I mean, a representative team or they're going away for um, something cultural, um, in cultural as in um, sport, um, sport um, music or um, drama or something like that. So there's a process that needs to be followed. I will communicate that in, in a letter um, to um, all of you in, in, the, in the days ahead so we're nice and clear. But if you're ever in doubt, um, please just give us a call and we're more than happy to help. Exam absences, it happens. Um, what has to happen is um, if they're unwell, um, they, we need you to call the school immediately and we need that doctor's certificate. Uh, Ms Hayden will reschedule the, um, the exam and a comparable gets set. And so that might take, generally we do it the next week. We, we do the exam block and then we do the catch-ups the next week. Um, it, it allows students to sort of get over their illness and, and move forward. Or sometimes it might be because of other family circumstances um, that go from there. Um, if a student is absent for an external exam, there's no catch-up. We need to submit an RL application and we need very thorough evidence. And that application is then considered by um, QCAA. And um, what they do is if that happens, students get an average mark and they have their own process. So that's outside of our hands. Um, it happens, it does happen. Um, um, and we just need to work together to make sure that we get that documentation right and then I submit that application online. So that's a little bit about ARA. It is a, uh, a very busy time in year 12 for our students. They, as I said earlier, they are balancing out um, you know, many different priorities, be it um, their learning, be it their um, outside of school endeavours. So we really require our senior students to be motivated. Um, they need to attend every lesson. We have, and it's written the student organiser that we've got um, an 85% uh, uh, att attendance um, um, measure that needs to be met by students to be able to represent the college to be able to participate in the formal, to be able to um, achieve success because evidence shows us that um, attending school goes a long, a long way in, that, in, in their learning and supporting students. Students need to have um, solid study skills and I went through some study skills with the, with the Ed 12s the other day. They need to be organised. They need to um, uh, work with their teacher on the external exams. I, I said to the students, the, the best person to know about the assessment task is the teacher because they wrote it. So really engaging with their teachers and getting feedback. Um, finally, um, before we conclude, one of the key things is this. For us, um, we take guidance from Pope Francis and one of the best things, one of the, the key things that I really enjoy um, in watching our year 12 students as they work through this year is is how they get rewarded for their hard work. And, and we, we take the um, calling from and the inspiration from Pope Francis, who talks about the dignity that we get from our work. And I know that our, our Year 12, our young people, take a lot of inspiration from you as their parents um, in 
in the, in watching you in your in your own work and how you go about um, work at home or in, in your own employment, they take a lot of inspiration and guidance from that. And we see that when they're here, when they're um, going through those highs and lows, and um, and and our students are all are very inspirational in the work that they're doing because achieving success in year eleven and twelve is is a rigorous journey, um, and um, we all should remain very proud of our students. In, in in their work and be really proud of their work ethic. And um, while that can be at times, can require some some um, improvement um, um, in the whole, we, we, um, the dignity that they gain from their work and their work ethic is, is that of um, something that we all should be very proud of. So just finally, the term ahead for our year 12 students. It's, it's a busy term. Um, and there's a few events I've just got here up on the on the um, on the screen here. Love Thy Navy Days next week. We've got the data test next week. Photos are coming up, uh, and then the assessment block at the end of term. So there's, um, as I said to you, the Year Twelves are very busy. There's lots of homework for them to do every night. There's uh, Mr. Shushner and and the math teachers say that there's always math homework for them to do. So. Um, um, we really look forward to the success that they're going to have this year. As always, the college calendar has been set home, the calendar, the um, uh, the hard copy version. But if you're unsure, please reach out to um, the PC teacher or the heads of house who are more than willing to help uh, help guide you in what's ahead. Um, we'll also send out information in term three um, that will give you those key dates for term four so that you know what the events are. If, if you need to start planning time off work or um, book travel for family who might come to celebrate um, the end of year, um, that, that we'll share that communication nice and early so that you can put that up in the fridge and you know what's ahead. Um, so thank you very much for your attendance tonight. If you have any questions about um, anything regarding your, uh, the learning of your, your child, please feel free to contact us. On the college website, you'll find the staff directory send us an email, give us a call. Um, we really look forward to working with you um, throughout this year. Um, there's going to be um, a large amount of success that we're going to see each and every day as we work towards um, meeting in person at that wonderful occasion at the end of the year when we celebrate, do those celebrations of the College Awards and, and the graduation day. Um, it, it, the year travels really quickly. And we really look forward, and I look forward to seeing you all at the key events throughout the year. So thank you very much for your attendance tonight and have a great evening. Thank you.